So let's take a look at the OBSBOT Talent. I just uploaded a full overview of this device, so if you haven't checked that out already, you can check it out up here, but I'll give you guys a quick TLDR. So this is a tiny little streaming tablet that you can plug a bunch of fancy DSLR cameras into. So it's got two HDMI ports, and you can also plug in some webcams. It's got a USB port there and a USB port there, and that allows you to have like a super mega over-the-top mobile streaming setup. It even works with their USB webcams, so this is the Tiny 2, just a normal USB webcam that you can just plug into one of these ports and then you can use the software on the tablet to control the gimbal, it's really cool. But it's really the software that is the standout feature for this thing. If you imagine what a mobile version of OBS would look like, that's basically like what the software is on this. By the way, yes, Obspot is sponsoring this video. I have to mention that, otherwise the government is gonna come and try kill me. But yeah, in this video, we're just gonna look at what the software experience is like for the Obsbot Talent. So when you first get the Obsbot Talent, this is the page that you're gonna see. I'm skipping this part because literally nobody cares. And then it'll ask you if you wanna do it in portrait or landscape, we'll do landscape. Along the bottom, you'll have a few pre-made scenes for you. So they're gonna be blank for now because we haven't connected any cameras. So let's go ahead and plug in a few cameras. So I got here, a Sony A6000, and we'll just use one of the, where is it? Okay, flip it upside down. We'll plug in the A6000 into the HDMI port, and then we'll turn the camera on, and then it, it just pops up. So we have HDMI one here, Let's zoom in a bit. We got HDMI one here, and then we have the other inputs as well. So there's a second HDMI port, and then a couple ports for webcams. Uh, we also have an Elgato Facecam Pro. So this is Elgato's 4K webcam. This is only 1080p, but we can still plug this in. So it doesn't have to be Obsbot webcams. You can plug in any UVC cameras. So let's just plug this one in and then we'll plug it into one of the HDMI ports, or sorry, the USB ports. And you can see this one just pops up as well. How cool is that? Now along the bottom, you can switch between your camera inputs, but this is more than just a camera switcher. These are actual scenes. So if you're familiar with using OBS, these are the equivalent of setting up your scenes. And that means you can set up your layouts however you want. So if we go over, we'll actually create a new scene. We'll just add one here and then we'll use HDMI one as our base, but we can do like picture in picture setup. So we can add another layer on top of this and then we can choose camera one here. And then you can see we can just drag this up into the corner or down into the corner and then click save. And then now we have an entirely separate scene here with two cameras. So we have like DSLR camera here and then we have like our USB webcam here. And just like OBS, you can customize your layouts like however the hell you want to. So you can come over here and go into edit and just tap on the camera. And because like moving it around with your finger is like kind of imprecise, you can just click on position here and then use the auto setting to like push it to the right. You can push it into the top right corner or like push it down into the bottom, bottom right corner. You can change the size of each of your sources. Maybe you can like, if you want to crop it in, you could just crop in the camera like that and then just move it wherever you want. You can also add a frame. A frame is just like a border. So we can change like the thickness of the border. You can see it adds a border around our camera. Uh, you can change like the color to blue, whatever you want, let's make it yellow. And then you can even round the corners. I'm like the king of rounded, I love rounded corners. And you can just like do it right in the software. You can't even do that in OBS. That's awesome. Just put that right there. And then you can also change the position of the borders. So right now it's drawing the borders within the source. You can push it so it draws around the outside of the source. And then once you're happy with that, you can just save it. Oh, you can also add like a label. Uh, so if you want to like label what this camera is here, you can just type in um, like, I don't know, anything you want to call it. <laughs> I probably shouldn't name it that. You name it whatever you want desktop and it, and it puts a label on the source. But just lay it out however you want to lay it out. And then when you're happy with that, you just click save and then, and then that's what your layout looks like. And you can set up as many scenes as you want and just flip between them. So uh, we can flip to our hand cam here. So that's the Elgato, the Elgato webcam. We can flip to just our main camera and then back to the scene that we just made. Also, if we go back into edit here, 
and click in the camera. I don't know why the label's still there. I thought I removed that. Let's get rid of that label. You can also adjust the transitions. So check this out. If I type, uh, if I tap on transition and change the in and the out, I'll change this to fly in. So uh, we want this to fly up like that. Oh, that flies down, my bad. Fly up and then the transition out will be fly down and then we'll change the duration as well. So look what happens. Now, whenever we change scenes, if I change to the uh, to the hand cam uh, and then back here, you can see how the camera just transitions up as well. So you can do like per source transitions, kind of like you can do an OBS. If you have your own graphics and you want to add your own overlay, for example, you can just load them up onto an SD card and pop that in and then come back into the uh, into the scene edit. So edit scene, and then we can just add a layer for that. So let's add in a picture, SD card, and then select our overlay here. And then we can just stretch that out. So come over to size, full screen. And then we have like my professional looking overlay, just like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it supports animated GIFs. So if I come back here into edit, and add a picture again. Like I definitely put a GIF onto my SD card, but it doesn't look like it can find it. So it would be really nice if we could put animated overlays. Maybe that can come in like a future software update or something. It does come with some pre-made widgets you can add. So come over to graphics and click the plus. You can see a list here. So we can add like social media and then put our name in here. And then we can like position that on our overlay. So like maybe on the top, top left looks good and then save. And then every single one of our scenes, if we activate that widget, we'll have that social media overlay. So this kind of works like a downstream keyer, or it literally is a downstream keyer. So whenever we change scenes, that graphic, whatever we put into the GFX layer, that will appear on top of everything. Now the graphics section is also the place where you can add all your alerts. So if you click the plus, you can add a web page. So here you could like build up your own stream elements overlay and then type in the URL for your overlay into that box and then that will appear there. So you get all your like your sub alerts, your follower alerts, you can show like your on-screen chat. Unfortunately, you could only type it in. So it doesn't like have a built-in web browser for you to like just copy your link and then paste it into this box. So you're gonna have to like go to your stream elements uh, website and then like manually type it in, which is super cringe, but I'll just go ahead and do it right now. All right, and that took approximately 14 years to add in. But now if we do a uh, follower alert, nothing appeared. I must have typed it in wrong. Fuck me, that's gonna take me forever to type in again. Yeah, this is crazy. They need to like give us a way to like, I don't know, like copy paste because this is insane. Oh, there it is, it finally showed up. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, it is annoying. You have to like type in a really long URL, but yeah. Hopefully Obsbot can put out a, another software update to just put a web browser. Allow us to like, you know, browse the web and then we can just copy links and put it in here. That would be so much easier. But in any case, I also put the sideways chat widget from stream elements down there. So if we uh, test a new message, uh, I don't know if you can see that. I have to like zoom in. How much can we zoom in here? Can you guys see that? We have the chat messages coming along the bottom there. So yeah, whatever you can do in stream elements, you could pretty much add as just a browser source in here. And then again, testing it, testing another sub alert and that should also pop up here. Once you're happy with the way your layout looks, oh, by the way, I should also mention, uh, there's like a whiteboard feature. So like, if you wanna be, if you're, if John Madden is watching my this video, wait, I think John Madden's dead. Sorry, this is, that, <laughs> sorry, that got really morbid. Anyway, uh, if you're doing like a sporting event, you get, you get like draw with a whiteboard and then it like automatically clears after a few seconds. There is also, a full audio mixer. So if we come out of here and go there, you can adjust the audio levels for each of your inputs individually. So for each camera, you can turn it up and down, uh, and then you could adjust the level for everything all at once, 
with the program slider. There is also a headphone jack on the side. So if you wanna plug in your headphones and then monitor it through your headphones, uh, you can do that as well. But most of you guys are probably gonna want to stream with this. And so you can, of course, hit the stream button and then log in with your YouTube account, your Twitch account, Facebook, whatever you want. And then there's also custom RTMP if you stream to like Kick or TikTok. But uh, we'll do YouTube. So we'll select YouTube here. And then here you can select your encoding settings. Now there's two presets for your encoding settings. There's encode one and encode two. You can customize that, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Um, and then you just go and then you log in. I'm also skipping this part because this video is way too long already. Once you see your profile picture there, you're good to go. Now, in the case of YouTube, you will have to set up your stream. So post to new stream here, and then you'll have to give it a title and go live and then connect. And now it should be streaming. Let's actually have a look at that. Let's go back into my YouTube dashboard and then yay. Yeah, you can, you can actually see the stream right here. It does also support multi-streaming out of the box. So you can go over here and connect your Twitch account and then connect to up to two platforms at the same time. So you can stream to YouTube and Twitch at 1080p 60 and it works totally fine. I have tried that and it does work. But for now, I'm gonna disconnect my YouTube stream. Now, how do you change your encoding settings? So if you go over to the hamburger menu and settings, go to encode and this is where you see your different encoding presets. So it has two by default, but if you wanna change that, you can just go to encoding two, and then there's a few you can select from, or you can just like add your own one and adjust the resolution, adjust the frame rate. You can, of course, also do H.265 if you stream to YouTube. I don't think you can do that for Twitch because Twitch doesn't support that by default. But uh, other than that, I think it works pretty well. Now, one more thing I did wanna show off. I did mention before that this supports PTZ cameras like OBSBOTS, uh, Tiny 2, so these are USB gimbal controlled cameras. The great thing about these webcams is since they're also made by OBSBOT, you could hold down on this scene here and click PTZ, and then now you get PTZ controls for this webcam. So I'm gonna just set this down right here. Okay, so you can see that it's not moving, but we can, we can just move the camera around. You can see how it's moving and then move it up like that to the left. And there's also the three preset controls. So everything you can do with the OBSBOT Tiny 2, which if you haven't seen that video, you can click in it here, but I have a few videos on the OBSBOT Tiny 2. Uh, yeah, you can, you can snap to different preset positions. Uh, you can turn on the human tracking. So it will start tracking my face. And then if I move around there, the gimbal starts tracking my face. So it tracks me as I stand up. Let's try this. Yeah, we'll walk around. So this is really cool. I imagine you could use this in like, if you're going to a convention, you could like strap one of these cameras onto your shoulder and it'll be like a stabilized camera. Here, let me do it. Imagine like I, I strap the camera on my shoulder like this and then that, that could like look around the convention hall like if I go to TwitchCon or something and then we could use uh, like our fancy mirrorless camera like this and that could be pointed at our face and you can do like a picture in picture thing here so you can see both cameras uh, at the same time. But uh, yeah, anyway, that is the Osbot Talent. If you guys are interested in checking out this uh, streaming tablet, uh, you can check it out in the description. And also uh, if you wanna see my full thoughts on the Osbot Talent, check out the video up here or where, where it's on the side, okay? Just, just click in it and watch it uh, and then you can you, you can go yeah yeah okay that's okay thank you all right see you later guys that's okay that's okay all right, all right see you later guys.